Welcome to the Ace Attorney Trilogy! Basically, now on Steam, what they've done is they've put all the Ace Attorney games and put them onto the Steam store so you can play all of them. There's like 13 episodes or something? There's a lot. There's a hell of a lot. I have never played this before in my life. I've heard of it. I think it goes, you're fired or something. I can't really remember what the catchphrase is. But we might do a series on it. I'm, I'm thinking about it. And this is more of a num 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 test the waters kind of thing. Num 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 num. Hopefully we can decide whether or not it'd be worthy. I'd like to see. So we got Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Ace Attorney, Ace Attorney. And Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. I guess we start on Numero Uno. Episode 1, the first turnabout. They look so happy, don't they? Looks wonderful. Wait, why, why, why didn't it go? Why didn't it go forward? Can, can we play? Play the first turnabout. I can. Is I, I don't really know how this works. I, I know you play like a kind of an attorney boy. I'm guessing you have to lawyer up. <gasps> <gasps> oh, that was horrible. Oh, no. It was fucking Cluedo. Mr. Mustard hit man lady with thing. Damn it. Why me? Is she thinking that? She's dead. I can't get cool. Not like this. Oh, shit. Who is it? I've got to find someone to pin this on. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Someone like him. Who? Who's him? Is that me? I'll make it look like he did it. Well, isn't that the kind of the point that you were making, right? I, I, what? <laughs> August 3rd, 940. I mean, that doesn't really help because I already know who it is. So what difference does it make now? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, no. Boy, I am nervous. Right. <laughs> Whoa. <clears throat> Hi, Chief. How are you doing? <laughs> Phew. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. So am I. No one takes on a murder child right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um. Cheers. Actually, it's because I am a favour. Who? Who do you owe a favour? A favour? Da ding? Who da dinged? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. That sounds like there's quite a lot of bias within that courtroom, and that should not stand, personally. But hey-ho, who am I to judge? I'm not a lawyer. I want to help him out in any way I can. I just really want to help him. Yeah, I know, you've just told me that. <laughs> it's over! Okay, well, okay, calm down. Fine, yeah. My life! Everything! It's all over! Huh? Who's that? Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah. That's him. Death to spare! Ooh. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! Let's <laughs> just make sure you see someone sitting around going, I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna kill myself! <laughs> Sounds like he wants to die. Yeah, you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> hey! Hey there, Larry! Dude! I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. <laughs> what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. Oh. But it wasn't, because I know it's not, because I saw the... I saw the cutscene. My name is Phoenix Wright. I mean, it's not, but thanks for trying. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Someone died, and I got to see who died anyway. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlikely sap dating her. Oh, unlucky. Larry Butts! My best friend since grade school. I scored her saying, when something smells, it's usually the butt. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble, even though he didn't do bugger all. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. <laughs> usually? I mean, he might have killed someone, but it's usually not his fault, so fuck it. He just has terrible luck. But I know better, th I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Even if he did punch that child in the park. 
That I owe him, well, that and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! Ow, fuck it, ow. That's fine, don't worry. August 3rd, 10am, District Court, Courts Room Number 2. Oh, okay, that was fucking loud. Ah, order! Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is... Why does shake on defense, Your Honor? Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Wright? This is your first trial, is it not? Y yes Your Honor. I am, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. I love how, like, cutesy the murder is. He goes, murder is a serious charge. Like, <laughs> why would you have this music behind it? Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances... Yeah? I think we should have a test to, to ascertain your readiness. Why would I have a test? Why are they going to go to court and be like, Oh yeah, before you start defending anyone, here's a quick test before we get going. Hands shaking, eyesight fading, palms sicking. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. It's Larry Butt, isn't it? The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Hugh. I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover many times. It's... Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, wait. No, no. I've forgotten. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Oof, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the tab. Okay, remember to check it off then. Do for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Uh, Cindy. Her name is <laughs> Cinderblock. Cindy Stone. Uh, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She got hit by a... F oh, she was hit with a blunt object. She got smacked. I didn't even have to look because I knew that from the fucking cutscene. Correct! You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you! Thank you, Your Honor. Because I feel relaxed. That's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. And the defendant doesn't have any hands! <laughs> Would you explain to the court what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see, and no one fingerprinted it, no, maybe? Uh, the statue added to the court record. Great. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition that you have in court. Use tab to check the uh, court record frequently. Can I have a look at the thing? Or I just look at the thing? That That's it. I don't get to, like, check. Hmm. Cool. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. And um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that may help your client's case. You'll get a chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything. Unfortunate. Oh, uh, that he gets excited easily. This could be bad. Oh, no. Hi, Larry. You look fucking suave. Oh, he's twitching. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, what's you, buddy? We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet. Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Um. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't talking, taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what would you describe as generally what we would mean by dumped? In fact, she had completely abandoned you. And was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it. Lies. I don't believe any word of it. Your Honor, 
The victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm. 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 Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. I... Dude! No way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this is, Mrs. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts. What do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Some from answering. My client has no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That's cheating she dog. I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm <laughs> gonna get the bottom of this, okay? Stop! <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quiet. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You entered the victim's apartment the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? Ha ha ha, well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. We're in court, this isn't time for games. Oh god, he went. What did I do? Uh, uh, have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Okay. Order! Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Oh, God, what? Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. This, this is news to me. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, this is bad. This is really, really bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. <laughs> Please bring Mr. Feng Schwitz to the stand. Oh, he's so happy. Ah, oh, he's so happy. Mr. Schwitz, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Schwitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Ah, oh, it was terrible. Witness account. I'm not going to believe it, am I? Because I literally fucking, like, saw him. <sighs> I was going door to door selling him subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1pm. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there! Oh, scary, oh! Hmm... Larry, why don't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that! Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. If it's a cordless phone, you'd be able to take the call because you just take it off the handset and ring. That's what cordless phones are for. The phone that Mr. Schwitz used was one of those. One of the ones that don't have to be plugged in to call. Yes. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. It's just to Mr. Stone's building was out from 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. From noon to 6 p.m. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. <laughs> all right, right. This is it. The real deal. Um, what am I going to do? 
Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony your witness gave. Lies? What lies? He's lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Ooh, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence that's at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the tab and then point out the contradictions in the testimony. Gotcha. Cross-examination. Right. I was going door-to-door -door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. Okay, so what do we have? Hmm. Nothing to do with that. I thought I must be in a hurry because I left because uh, he left the door half open behind him. See, what's going to be the contradiction here? Hmm. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, DEAD! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Right, okay. I thought to call the police immediately, however the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Well, I mean, like, uh, whatever. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1pm. The man who ran without a doubt was sitting over there. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Then, find the evidence contra- Okay, right, okay. Right, maybe... Hmm. Maybe it's something to do with the thingy. I don't know. Right, okay. Hold it! The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't, right. But you said you didn't go in the apartment, yeah! Or did you? Oh, oh that? I could explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Hmm, I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Okay. Right, okay. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer in the nearby apartments. Alright, what time did you call again? It was 1pm. Hold it! 1pm? <laughs> Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1pm? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Alright, okay. So... Right, okay. 1pm. So maybe that? Present it. OBJECTION! This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction that the statement, Your Honor. How exactly is that evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? No. Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think of the facts over before making accusations. Okay. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Sugar. Well, I don't have anything... Right, okay, right, yeah. 1pm, da 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 1pm, da 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 Yeah, so what, what's the thing? Oh! The time of death was 4 p.m. The time of death was 4 p.m. Oh! Wait, no, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. I need an objection, I need to object! I need to object! Yes, I know, it's, it's strange. It's strange for that exact reason. I need to present some evidence. It's this one. The time of death was 4 p.m. You found the body at 1 p.m. Are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Oh, by the way, she died at 4. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh. Oh, that. Oh, um. Oh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. No, after his testimony, I find that hard to believe, considering how much he said 1 p.m. enough. Why were you so certain you found a body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, I, well, um, 
Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and that whole story falls apart. Wait! I remember now! <laughs> Would you care to give your testimony again? Perfect. Great. I have to go through that again. Right. The time of discovery. Gotcha. You see, when I found the body, I heard of the time. I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video or tape program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, okay. Right, well, okay. Hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. Yep. You know what to do. I've got this one. Right, okay. So let's have a see. Nom, 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 nom. I heard the time. Hold it! You said heard, not saw? Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else. At least, not on my watch. Hmm. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But you were so shot by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. But when you did say he actually heard the time, it's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm. I have to agree with the contribution. Witness, continue your testimony. Uh, it was probably coming from the television. Okay, hold it! Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right! I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. Hmm. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Tell me. How do you explain the gap? Well, the witness, can you explain this? I guess the victim must have been watching a videotaped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry. Hmm. Hmm. No, there was a voice saying the time. It's probably coming from the television. Right? Right, okay. Hmm. So what do we have? Oh! There you go. There you fucking go. Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there's been a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. I... I will... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Short? No, I... Uh, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Um... Ah! Uh, wait, I remember now. Mr. Shewitt, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Ah, no, I'm not, uh, my, my apologies, Your Honor. It, um, it, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Shewitt. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Ah, witness testimony, hearing the time. Good. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. What? What? You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine a witness. Gladly. Fucking gladly. Guys are going terrible. How are you hearing anything? So... Right, actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it on the victim. Uh, no, he didn't. He used that. Objection! Wait, just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how was this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence. <laughs> and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Swit. Hey, I... I saw it in there, okay? That's a clock! Your, your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. And it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was the table clock after all. Well, Mr. Ryan, it appears that the witness's testimony is correct. That is a clock. 
you have any funds with this testimony now? Yes. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in this witness's testimony. The only way you could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Yes. Ugh. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... He went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I weren't in there. I literally just did. I'll do better than that. I can prove you're the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock and shook... And shook the blow with the trigger... <laughs> I lost it there. Fucking hell. It triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Objection. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Ryan. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, he knows it. Mr. Sweet. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. For you to remember exactly how it went. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. But, but what's this meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, 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 that day, I, I never, look, I did, the clock, I had, no, I mean, I saw, I saw, no. <laughs> ah, what the fuck, just was too pay at me. Shut up, shut up, I hate you. It was, it was him, I tell you, I saw him. I think he killed her and he should burn, burn, give him death. <laughs> Fucking hell. Stop. Order, order in the court, I say. Your honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting this, this, this defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your honor, you claim to sound the witness heard from came from the clock. Do you have any, do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Schmidt heard was definitely this clock. The fact of which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. <laughs> I think it's... 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conjunctions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! <laughs> As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Schwitt heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sewitt, try to talk your way out of this one, buddy. Ha! Ha ha ha! You forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he gonna talk about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. What? How? He's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it. I was so close, Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. How do I? Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. Ah, oh, okay, well, great. This sends the cross-examination of Mr. Franks to it. Well, that was fucking pointless. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lies are all slime. Grr. I almost had him. Damn. Sorry, Larry. You're going to jail. There's nothing I can do about it now. Apart from, you know, maybe check for fingerprinty boys. Not so fast, Mr. Shuit! Oh! Mia, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste your time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself. Why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh. Oh! Ahaha, yes! Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere you can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you said the clock was running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course, there's a convincing evidence of the court record. 
Haha, <laughs> tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. That's why. That's exactly why. She was in Paris. The victim had just returned her home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. there, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock was in three hours slow. It's nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's the why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Schwit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It. Oh! Nah. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Did he just die? Order! Order, I say! He died. That's cool. Well... This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, um, he... He was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. I have to find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts... Not... Guilty! Yay! <laughs> Woo! And with that, this court is adjourned. And with that, I am finishing this episode. Woo! That was really fun. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> Please do let me know if you did enjoy this episode, because I will definitely do, like, even more, as many as I can, because I find this really fun. I don't know what else to say. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Bye!